Tony, and a late afternoon to all of you. Welcome to What If Deku Met Melissa Early. How are we going to start this What If? Well, I don't know myself, but we're going to find that out as we go along. But first off, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video so we know how to actually keep up with the content that I'm going to start posting out a lot more often. As for people who are wondering about the buzzing noise, I'm going to get that fixed soon. Don't worry about it. I do hope you all enjoy this video, and goodbye. So let's begin. Izuku, hurry up, sweetheart. We're going to be late for your plane ride. I know, Mom. I'm coming, Izuku said. As he grabbed his suitcase and rushed downstairs with a bolt of all might when he ran past with a bullet. Moving faster than a speeding bullet, that's what I mean to say. As Izuku rushed down the stairs. As he hugged his mother for the first time before he left. Front door. Izuku, you forgot this, Inko said as she threw him his cap. Of all my cap, of course. As Izuku and Inko both left for the airport, as they both arrived, finally saw their terminal about to depart. As Inko and Izuku both rushed through passport control as they arrived there in just time to spare, as they put all their stuff in their airlock bag or the cabinet above, of course. As they settled down and sat there, for the next 12 hours for their flight to USA. As five hours passed when they landed, Izuku and Inko both got off the plane as the moment they, well, got to the exit, their cab was holding a sign up for the Midorias. As they both walked over to their cab and told them where exactly where they're going, as five hours, <laughs> kidding, 20 minutes later have passed as they both arrived to the I, well, the I Island, well, hotel version of it at the time. If you guys know what the I Island Hotel looks like, it's the thing that Mina, Suyu, and that stayed in when they uh, did their, well, thing, of course. As they all, as Izuku sat down, as his mother walked over, well, to the desk and got her keys to unlock her room. As Izuku and Inko both went up to her room, as they both sat down and went to sleep for the rest of the day until dinner came around. As they both went downstairs and enjoyed the rest of their day. As two hours went by, as Izuku and Inko were both sitting in the lounge discussing what they could do tomorrow in excitement. Well, Mom, we can go visit here, here, and here. Or maybe we can go visit this park over here, Izuku said. Well, son, we need to uh, figure that out as we go along. If we rush everything, we've got two weeks, remember. If we do everything all at once, there's nothing else to do. But if we do everything, Izuku, please, Inko said. Okay then, Mom. Izuku and Inko both left the hotel at the earliest of mornings to try their best to get to their location, which is the other side of I Island. As Izuku being... Well, old enough to do stuff on his own, he went off to try and find something for his mother for a present of some sort. As Izuku came back to see his mother talking to somebody that he didn't recognize. Hey mom, what is it? Izuku said, walking over. Hey Izuku, I want you to meet somebody. Mr. Shield? Izuku said as his fanboy mode turned on. That sounded very wrong out loud, just ignore that. As Izuku and Inko both had their conversations with Mr. Shield, as he decided to invite them to an outing with him and his daughter. So mom, how do you know Mr. Shield, Izuku said. Well, we both went to the same university together. I studied uh, medical, he studied physical. Basically, he learned more robotic than anything else. Well, five years later, he somehow managed to get the award for the best, well, creator on Earth. As, uh, we haven't been actually been able to keep in touch for a while, but we'll keep in touch here and there. I don't think it was irrelevant until now, Inko said. You being serious, Mum? The most insane inventor in the world and you never bring him up? Damn, Mum. Who else are you going to keep secret, you know, all might? He said. Uh, Inko looked away casually. But you know all might. You know 
All Might, Izuku said, trying to jump out of her skin until they arrived at close. This special shield, Izuku and Inko both sat down and waited for their new guests to arrive. Sorry I'm late, Papa, she said, running over. And she hugged her father and sat down next to him. Inko, this is my li- this is my little girl. But Melissa, is that you? She said. Auntie Inko, and she hugged her tighter than what anything could be. Oh, this is my son. This is Izuku. Inko. Hey, I thought you didn't keep in contact, Mom. Or did I? Oh, no. We keep in contact every so often through uh, videos. Like once every five years, Inko. So this must be Izuku, huh? You're crookless as well, aren't you? Melissa said. Yes, I am. As Melissa's eyes brightened with stars in them, and she hugged Izuku as tight as she could, knowing that it's another crookless person that she, that she could relate to for that moment. As three hours would have passed, as Izuku, Melissa, Inko, and, well, Mr. Shield would have gone all their separate ways back to their hot- hotels or homes for this matter. As Izuku was happy that he could meet one of his favorite people and his idols for that matter, and also meet a fellow quirkless person who has struggled the same way he has done, but in a different manner to what he has done too. As throughout the rest of the Midoriya's trip, they have done many other things, like visit our caves, do landmarks, and even Melissa has invited Izuku over to show her his inventions and everything of the sorts. And Izuku, on the other hand, really enjoyed his stay there, but he knew he had to leave. But before he left, Melissa gave him her contact number. The same thing with other stuff as well. Here you go, Izuku. If you want to become a hero, make sure you work hard for it, okay? She said as she gave him her smile. I could kill anybody the same way Izuku ever did. So, everything from the canon timeline after this spot would be normal, all the way until they reached to the I Island event in the movie, of course. As Izuku and All Might were both walking to see Melissa, or All Might's ne- niece, as they both arrived, everything went from canon, but one key difference changed. Hey, Izuku, is that you? Melissa said as she went over and hugged him as well. Melissa, you know him? Yeah, of course I do. He was uh, Auntie Inko's friend. Remember? Auntie Inko. What the hell? Oh. Oh, there they went with friend. Yeah, no, I get it. All Might said. As Izuku... Wait, Izuku, did you get into UA? Why are you wearing your hero costume? Oh, yeah, I, uh, I got accepted into the hero program, he said. That's so cool, Melissa said, as she patted on Izuku's outfit, wondering what could be wrong with it. Hey, Melissa, what's wrong? Well, there doesn't seem to be much padding here, she said, nubbing on his shoulders, chest, and arms. So, what happened here? There must be more defense here, right? Yeah, there is a little bit more, but my body gets more tougher the more I go along. More tougher? What do you mean, Izuku? What do you mean? She said. Oh, Mike, can I please tell her it seems a bit wrong that I don't? Let's get into a secluded area first, and then we'll tell, okay? It all might said, as everything from the timeline would have happened. All the way until Izuku and Melissa were both left alone so they can have their conversation. So Izuku, why are you wearing a hero outfit with barely any protection? Well, you see, Melissa, um, I unlocked a quirk. So you, so you wasn't quirkless? She said, with a frown. Wait, 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 before you start going a little sad mode, can you just let me explain for a second? Izuku said. Okay, 
what's wrong. Well, you see, my quirk was given to me. You see that uh, guy called O for One on the TV? Yeah, he gave it you, did he not? No. All Might did. All Might? You mean his quirk is, is passable? Yes. All Might's losing slowly his power, but it's not exponentially losing, losing it. So far, All Might is able to keep his power stable, but when he passed his quirk on to me, he started losing it more and more often. I'm thinking he's okay, but I don't know for much longer. So, how much of All Might's power can you handle? About 8% minimum. Why? Izuku said. Wait, give me a second. I think I can get you something, Melissa said reaching into a drawer and pulling out an armband. Put this on really quick, she said, still not blending it in that Izuku randomly manifested a quirk as Melissa put it onto Izuku's arm as their, well, not argument, their conversation continued. Five minutes later, Izuku explained how All for One and One for All came to be from All Might's point of view with how he explained it. So, why didn't All Might give me his quirk? Because, um, he knew you would be in danger no matter what you did. So his only way out of this was to pass it on to me, and pass through that, and so on, because he wanted to keep you safe. And not let you see the burden of what one for all carries, he said. Uncle Might, she said, while shedding a tear. Two hours later, once Izuku explained everything. So, everything with one for all is technically a curse, right? Technically, yeah, as Izuku and Melissa talked while walking through the city. As they had their fun throughout the day, as they would normally do in canon. As the final meetup finally came through, as everything here would be a little bit more awkward. So, Midoriya, who are these people? Melissa said, interrupting, well, Ochako and Momo's experience. So, yeah, how long have you two known each other? Momo said. Oh, we've known each other for a year. Izuku and, uh, well, Inti Inko introduced us, Melissa said, not counting out the context in her words. So, you two have been... As Ochako fainted from the stress of that conversation. As a minute later, they all surrounded into a cafe to sit down. As all the girls went to their one seat. As Izuku as sat in his own. Breathing in and out from the stress of trying to explain how Izuku and Melissa both met. As a minute later, they arrived. Mineta and his electric friend, or the brain-damaged one, as they both arrived and tried to take their orders, as they realized Mineta saw a bombshell in front of him. As everything throughout the rest of the timeline would happen normally, until Izuku figured out, well, Mr. Shield portrayed All Might in his own fair well gain in his own matter. Papa, you didn't, you didn't side with the villains, did you? Melissa said. No, I didn't. I'm only doing this for All Might, All Might's sake as only. If I did this for any other sake, it would be villainous. But All Might is losing power at an exponential rate. If I don't do this, then it's going to be the end of the symbol of peace. Mr. Shield said. But no, Papa, he can't. Shut it, child, the villain said, using his power to try and kill his daughter, as Izuku stepped in front of it and destroyed it in one smash. As Melissa hit the floor and blood came from her head, Izuku got really annoyed and went full out. Instead of using 50% from cannon, he went 100. As this 100% smash cracked the gauntlet slightly, but only slightly, with a little slightest bit of crack. As Izuku landed that blow on the man's head, sending him furthest back, even into other buildings, 
50 meters, not even 50 meters, two miles away from where he was standing. Izuku was lucky that he didn't actually blow the guy's head off, but I don't know if he's alive still or not, but he probably might not be. <laughs> As Izuku and Melissa both ran to the top to try her best and try his best to try and stop him from making a big mistake. As Izuku and Melissa both arrived there, as everything from canon went along with it. But when Izuku and Malmite threw their last smash, Izuku's arm broke. On the last smash, it broke like what it normally did. As Izuku and Melissa, throughout that day, both went on their day as normal. But Izuku felt a little bit more betrayed when Mr. Shield tried to actually steal his invention back. Melissa, are you going to be fine on your own? Izuku said. And being honest, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've actually had a couple of friends come up to me a couple of while, about a couple of minutes ago. Saying I could live with them for a bit, but I don't want to be a burden. Then why don't you come live with me for a little bit then? You know my mom personally, and you know me. Well, you've only known me for a year. But... <laughs> I'm seeing that'll be decently perfect, though, won't you agree? Um, sure, why not? I'll have a talk with Uncle Might and see how this goes. Uncle Might goes to my high school, you know that, right? Wait, really? I thought he didn't actually teach. Well, he's a shit teacher, but he's not too bad, I wouldn't think, Izuku said. As Melissa let out a giggle. Izuku and Melissa talked for hours at that point, well it felt like it, as they separated for the night, as tomorrow Melissa would bring it up to her Uncle Might about, well, moving to UA and studying there alongside her friends and Izuku with an emphasis on that. As the day goes on, as Izuku returned back to UA to study his heroic journey. As Izuku was sat down in his seat as Izar was explaining something. Okay, class, we got a transfer student coming in. Go on, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Melissa Shield. It's very nice to meet you all. As I will end up today's video. This video is a bit short than most what-ifs, but that's just text-to-speech in it. I'm being hypocritical with that. I'm aware of it. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.